Hello, good evening. This is Professor Khan, and uh, we are on uh, week 10. Uh, we had an offset of week uh, 7 for the midterm, and this week we're talking about hot water. Uh, we're talking about water heating. That's f we. That means we are talking about uh, domestic hot water. That is hot water that is uh, designed to be for showers or kitchen or your laundry machine or other needs. Uh, why do we talk about hot water? Because hot water is a big source of uh, energy consumption and uh, we need to know what is the hot water needs for that house because it again it consumes energy and also if we are going to design a steam system or a water system that's hydronic system we need to know uh, if this system will be also heating water for domestic hot water instead of uh, heating the space okay so let's start all, all right let's move on so uh, let me see the objective of this class we'll talk about Water heating energy use, how much water we use and we need to heat water. We're talking about water heating capacity. What does that mean? What do we, what do we mean by heating capacity? Uh, in a nutshell, we are talking about the ability of the water to hold heat. Probably you have noticed it takes a long time to heat water. Also, it takes a long time to cool water. So water has a very high heat capacity which means it requires a lot of energy to heat. Uh, water heating efficiency. What does that mean by efficiency? Again, we always said efficiency is energy output over energy input. So how much are we putting in terms of energy to heat that water? Uh, we will also talk about, uh, talk about water heating design, or water heater design. Uh, what are they made of? What are the components? Why why the prices do differ from one water heater to another? We we'll also talk about type of storage for hot water. Uh, do we need to have storage to start with? And uh, what type of tanks do we need to store hot water? Again, uh, also types of water heaters as well. I'm gonna try to see if I can use my pen. Okay, type of storage hot waters. Alternatives in water heating. What are the options? What do I have for options to heat my water? Improvements that has been done on water heaters, maintenance, and operation of hot water systems. Okay, let's start. So water heaters. If we think about water heaters again, as we do when we think about heating a space, we are talking about a heat source. By heat source, we need to think about what is making the heat. So same, I mean, similar to what we have for heating a house, where is the heat coming from? Again, we said in the first law of thermodynamics, energy does not come from nothing. So the heat has to come from somewhere. And this somewhere could be either burning gas, burning oil, or combustion. Generally, we've got to burn something to make heat. Alternatively, we can use electrical heaters, which is converting electrical energy into heat we can also think or do a heat pump which is utilizing the refrigeration cycle to heat water which mean which means that we will capture the btus and the heat energy in the air and put that into water so that is the heat source heat exchanger the heat exchanger is a surface that will transfer heat from one medium to another so we talked about, again, this equation that I love so much and we keep talking about times delta T. So this is the heat transfer, okay? So a heat exchanger utilizes this equation to transfer heat from one space to another. And why do we need to use a heat exchanger? Is because sometimes we do not use the same fluid. We could be using water and the antifreeze could be using water for uh, domestic hot water and also using water for the system. So we need to uh, keep those liquids separate and use a heat exchanger. We will talk also about the piping system. There is also a piping system involved into these water heaters. If you want to use water, you definitely have to use pipes. 
right? So when you use the pipes, you will know uh, you need to carry the water inside those pipes through turns and take it from one place to another. Uh, so that also takes us to plumbing fixtures for hot water. At the end, when you want to use the water, you're gonna take it outside the pipe and for now you need some kind of fixtures, showers, faucets, uh, sprinklers, whatever you have, mister. So again, this is how you end up using water. So if we think again for the electricity and water uh, similarities, if we will love to use a load and electricity as a light bulb, for us, the load in water is going to be where it ends up be used. And let's think about it again. Even though we're using water to wash our hands, the water is washing your hands, but then it's going somewhere. It has to go into the a drain. So again, it's a, it is a circle, a circuit, and it has to go somewhere. Uh, again, there are some water heaters that have tanks and some that are tankless. You will run through these a lot. Sometimes you heat a water in a tank and sometimes you heat a water on the go. So you can't heat water without even having a tank. Uh, if you think, for example, for, uh, let's think a little bit, uh, the coffee machine that's like the Keurig. This uh, machine does not heat the water and store it. No, it heats the water on the spot on the go. So take a small portion of water, heat it on the spot, then you use it. Also, if you use your uh, water cooler, it sometimes have a hot water faucet. It does heat the water on the go. It does not need to use it. And this ability came about because we can now heat the water efficiently and quickly throughout pipes. So water, heat capacity, and heat energy. On average, we need to use 3,500 kilowatt hour of electricity or the equivalent of 230 terms of gas per year to hot water. So that is a lot of energy to just heat water. Uh, it measures up to 15% of the water of the electricity bill and 25% of the gas bill. Uh, probably you have noticed in the summertime if you have a hot water system that operated by gas, even though the heat is off, you're still going to use around, uh, depending on your usage, you're still going to pay for gas and that's basically just for hot water needs. And again, if you have a tank, probably you're doing yourself a disservice because you are actually heating water and keeping it hot for a long time, waiting for you to use it. Meanwhile, you, know, you might not use it for, for a day or two, or if you go away the weekend, the, the water heater is still sitting there. So that's not a very smart thing to do. But again, in the past, we did not have the capability to heat water on the, on the spot, which we called on-demand heater, which is very, very efficient. So demand, standby, distribution, these are all losses. If you go to South America or some places where they try to be very conscientious about the energy, you will find out that they have a water heater in the shower head. So you see the shower head plugged in into the, the wall somewhere and the heater is on demand. You heat the water as it goes. Uh, you look at it, you might think it's not safe to have a plug with uh, where the water is, but it's actually very safe, but that did not take here in the US for many reasons. Actually, for some for some newer models, probably you'll be able to buy that uh, and plug it in the bathroom. But again, I don't know if it's uh, if the designs here are ready for it. But you can always have an on-demand water heater plugged in in a closet or a small little box next to the the shower. Uh, you can also have some water heaters that next to the sink. So it turns on whenever you need to. And they got much smaller now. Probably you can get a water heater that as big as your laptop. Okay. So hot water consumptions. This is again just an estimate. It's a very optimistic. I mean, actually not optimistic. That's an exaggerated need. So for one person, you will need to use 25 gallons of hot water. That is uh, including shower, laundry, uh, dishwashing, washing hands, etc. That is a little bit high. And this has been reduced a lot by using really good measures to economize water here. So again, you see the, the equation does not always uh, multiply or increase. I mean, the more people you have, the less uh, hot water you need because again, you will wash the dishes all in one load and that will make things a little bit efficient. Okay, this is hot water consumption. Moving on, the same 
efficiency chart in here uh, just to show you how much losses we have when it comes to hot water there is a lot of losses everywhere but look at this combustion that's if you're using something if you're burning something to heat the water standby so standby is a very very bad area when it comes to losses you lose a lot of the input from zero to 70 percent just stand by waiting for the hot water to be used distribution again that's another issue and think about that because you have your hot water tank in the basement of course in the basement because it's a heavy equipment and also if it leaks or if it breaks you don't want it to be leaked all over the house so it's a wise thing to put in the basement right uh, i hope you agree with me on that then so you put that in the basement and to pump water to the bathroom in the third floor by the time it got there probably it ran through the entire house or the down the height of the house and lost some heat so that's a lot of losses so finally you get from 35 to 70 percent losses 70 percent if you do everything right and everything's insulated you still have a lot of losses from what you have put as energy so you can probably now by now thought hey maybe i'm better off just putting the heater where I need it, right? I put the heater in the bathroom, I put the heater in the kitchen and not uh, deal with all these losses. Okay, so water efficiency, there's something called the energy factor. This, uh, these are just measures of how do we rate those water heaters. We have energy factor. Again, it's the ratio of the useful water heating energy output to the total energy consumed by the water heater. That's something you'll see in the in the uh in the label when you buy the water heater there's something called the first hour rating that's a little bit complicated but what they try to say is how much how much heat you get from one hour of running that water heater it gets a little bit complicated people did, did not understand what does it mean but the the point is how much hot water can I get out of one full hot water tank that's uh, still being used not very common what we get is the gallon per minute. Gallon per minute is very, very common. Uh, just to give you an idea of uh, the typical traditional hot water heater, you have the, let me see if I have a blank page. I will look at, I'm gonna use this to just explain. So you have, this is your tank, right? So the tank has hot water coming out and cold water coming in, right? Because you have to have input and output. So this is out. And there's an existing water in here. Let's say the water here is at 180. So when you take water out in the beginning, it's going to be 180. Then you have also your heat element in here. So pumping water in probably is going to be at 50. Let's say that's in the winter. So as you pump in water, so you will get hot water for, I don't know how long. That depends on the first hour rating that we talked about. And then you keep heating. So at some point, the water inside and outside will equalize and you'll have an average based on the water heating capacity. So the water will be very hot, then it will taper down and eventually you'll get lukewarm water based on the average at the speed of, of which you are consuming water and how much heat is being put in by the heater. So it will average out. If the water inside the tank is 180, it's, uh, highly unlikely you'll get you get 180 all the time, even though it's stored in there because you are pumping cold water when, as you're taking hot water out. I hope that makes sense a little bit. Uh, going back to the slide, the water heater design type. So they depend on that spirit usage again, how much usage you're gonna get out of it, how much flow you need. And of course, the number of occupants, type of piping and insulation. If you have pipes made out of metal, we know metals does consume a lot of, uh, it does take a lot of uh, uh, energy and uh, it absorbs heat. And by doing so, you're going to heat the pipes and the heat will dissipate somewhere else. Then we'll talk about the uh, piping, oh, hold on, what happened? The piping and insulation. Let me go back again. Okay. Piping and insulation and uh, solar. There are some solar water heaters that are popular, but not a lot in New England, but we still have some of these and they do work and they do very efficient work. Uh, again, 
the gas gas are very common i do have a gas one and you can also have oil so what by these water heater we are talking also electricity we're talking about the heat that's been put into this uh coil in here so you can heat with solar where you have a solar panel somewhere in here it's kind of bigger than this so this solar panel will heat the water and the water will go and heat the tank if you go into the shop i'll show you that we have a big solar panel that actually heat water in the summertime so at least in the summertime you can get rid of all the i mean shut off your gas and dependent solar for hot water needs for gas and oil probably you'll have fire you have a, a burner coming into your water tank in here and combust some fire inside i'll show you a better picture than that and for electricity you can either you can have a hot water coil i mean a water heater uh inside the water that's the basically electrical coil or you can have a heat pump a heat pump is a completely different design so storage so that's a the, that's the wise the basics or the basis for uh water heaters let's talk about a little bit about uh, uh water storage so usually we depend on insulated water tanks sized from 30 to 80 gallons depending on how much water do you need probably if you live in an apartment complex you're gonna have a lot a huge water tank that is used for both hot water need and also for heating systems uh insulation r value between 3 and 25 you want the tank to be insulated if you go to a hot water tank you touch it and it's warm you know you're losing heat through that insulation so that's not a really good insulation the price of the water tank and the water storage depends on so many factors. The size, insulation, the coating from the inside and outside, which is very important. You're dealing with hot water, and hot water tends to ionize a lot of things in the water, uh, in the in the tank, and eventually the tank will start to corrode. Uh, the metallurgy, which is the metal that made out of the tank, and what is the warranty on it? Uh, what did they use for corrosion resistance? There are a lot of safety measures in terms of uh, safety relief valve and so on. Again, you're heating water inside closed vessel. So that is uh, a probability of something exploding because it's building pressure. So it's very, very, very dangerous. And I don't know if you saw it or not, but Mythbusters had this experiment where they saw what would be the problem of heating water, uh, for heating water, overheating water inside a tank and with no safety features and that water tank actually built up enough pressure to go through the roof of a two-story building i don't know how far it went into the sky but it's a lot of pressure never underestimate the power never underestimate the power of steam okay energy consumption the more efficient the water tank is the more expensive it will be warranty and service how often does it have to be serviced all these factors and some other modes are going to be part of that hot water system cost how much does it cost and uh how much you are going to be paying as a capital cost and also as an operation and maintenance cost as well okay i hope that gives you an idea about the next time you want to put some water tank inside your building and uh, they do break they do leak it's uh they the warranty on those is it says to be 10 years for some of them look at that there's a lot of very cheap ones and economical ones depending on how often you use it uh but think about the uh, the aftermath what would happen what is the consequence of having water leak inside your house it's very devastating that's why it's really good to have some kind of uh renters insurance or house insurance because you will have a lot of uh, things that need to be replaced and uh, water will be all over the place. So again, these things require frequent maintenance. Not everybody does the maintenance as you're supposed to. Uh, I will show you also about uh, something about the sacrificial rod inside the tank. It has to be replaced frequently and people do not do that, which is a really, really not a good idea. Okay, uh, gas and oil water heater, those are very common probably you'll get to see some of those and probably you'll work on some of these so since we said heat pumps for water is not very efficient i mean in new england depending because again where are you gonna get the heat from 
you know it would be a good idea for the winter for the summertime but in the winter it's very challenging to get a heat source for that so if you will like to have a separate system just for hot water than heating the house you might have a water heater that has either gas or oil and probably you have the tank or uh, in here a small amount of water that get heated and you have your burner in here and it will it will work the same way you work your oil burner that heat hot water system but the pressure here is very low and it has different configuration uh, the capacity also is very small as you can tell from this tank can you use this burner to heat the house yes you can but it's not recommended it's not going to be as heavy duty as burning uh, fuel to heat the house this is very small this is intended for hot water use which is 25 gallons per day not to circulate hot water through the house running for 12 hours a day this is an example of a typical boiler that is on demand this is an on-demand uh, boiler it, it's gas it turns on and the water goes through this heat exchanger heat and get heated quickly as we fire the the burner and it comes out Okay, this is combustion air coming inside, vent air for combustible for a uh, flue pipe coming to the outside. Uh, let's look at this a little bit. If you go into the shop, we have a Wiesman on demand water heater, and these water it, it is meant these are meant to supply hot water for domestic hot water and also for to heat a house on demand. So you can have a hot water system with an on-demand water heater without storage. They are very efficient, they're very quick, and they get very small as uh, as uh, technology has improved. So consider this, these ones uh, sometimes if you are going to install uh, on-demand hot water system or to, if you were to replace your, uh, your boiler inside the house. So this boiler again, it is using gas as you can see so there is a small small uh kind of packaging it's not as big as the oil one because you can you can have more more flame distribution when it comes to gas than when you do with oil okay uh electrical heaters again where you have a heating element this is a very small heating element and again it was meant to heat the water over a long period of time that's why it's very small and uh, these heat elements need to be changed frequently. Sometimes they are put in an enclosure. So if the enclosure is not, uh, if the enclosure in here, let me see, get corroded, probably you will damage the heat element quickly. And probably there is a safety device that will uh, cut off the fuse out of this heat element once it's damaged. But uh, we have, and this is called the electrical resistance here is it's not the heat pump the heat pump is something different it has a whole kind of uh, compressor on it it looks like an AC but it's not an AC but it does have a compressor and it does use a refrigeration cycle and it does dispense a lot of cold air outside uh, here's what it looks like this is the heat pump water heater as you can see it looks like a fridge or a an AC and uh, again probably you have noticed that your fridge if you look at your fridge your fridge actually is uh, you can say the fridge is a heat pump in a way it's cooling the inside and rejecting a lot of heat into your kitchen but again it's not a lot and it takes a long time to do that and uh, same idea here and instead of uh, cooling the water uh, cooling inside the fridge we're heating inside the fridge but this time the fridge is full of water as you can see, it takes a while for this water to be heated. And again, the 80 gallon tanks probably takes a long time to be heated. And somehow you have to reject, you have to absorb the heat somewhere. So warm air is coming from here. Let's assume it will be, that's going to be in your basement. So if your basement is at 70, you're going to extract the, some temperature from here. And this is going to be at 50, so 70 and 50, and you have 20 degrees going to the water. However, if it's winter time, where are you going to get the 70? You're going to be burning oil somewhere else. So it's kind of uh, uh, not really beneficial, right? So you don't want that kind of design when, when the climate is very cold.
Uh, combustion, again, we talked about that before. Uh, combustion when you have a sealed combustion or open combustion. The difference is here. The open, com the open combustion is you get, or uh, open design, you have the air coming from the space, from your basement, into here, into the combustion chamber, burning water, burning, uh, sorry, burning gas and heating the water, and then the flue pipe, flue gases go outside. In here, it's kind of different. I'm getting all my air from the outside and rejecting all the flow to the outside. So it's completely efficient, I mean, sufficient. It takes the air from the outside, does not need air from the inside. Why is that a big deal and why is it a problem? Uh, the problem is, a lot of time we do not want to depend on inside air for combustion because sometimes we don't have enough. So it's good to have sufficient air from the outside coming all the time. And probably you have guessed it. You want to always check those exhaust for obstructions, for things in it. Uh, probably now I have opened your eyes to a lot of things in your house where you're living that you should be checking all the time and not wait for them to break. It's kind of like your car. There's a lot of things you have to check because uh, things get old and things change. And also you are dealing with an environment. Things get, side, get inside the house and things come out of it. You should always check those things. And probably if you're renting, you don't worry about any of these things. But if you're a homeowner, it's something you have to worry about. And uh, you have to always schedule this maintenance so it does not happen. Uh, so things are not breaking the very inopportune time. Like uh, you come in the winter time when it's really cold and you're going to call for help. And guess what? Nobody's there. Everybody's busy. So it's good to have this maintenance. And it's good to explain that to... The person you are installing this equipment uh, in their space, whenever you go into somebody's house, explain to them what's happening and show them, okay, you need to do the maintenance because of this or that or the other, or at least provide them with the things that they can help them do the maintenance, and it will make your job much uh, easier. Okay. Uh, another interesting type of water heater is the indirect water heater for my hydronic heating system. So what happens here is this tank, this is just hot water tank, but it's getting its water from the hot water system that is used for heating the house. So you're heating the house using steam, or using hot water, and you wanna just uh, piggyback on that system and use the hot water. So you can, it's not a big deal. You're gonna, in the, when, it's, when it's on, you will, Take a coil and run it inside the tank and draw it back to the to the boiler. The problem you might uh, face in this system is that during the summertime when you do not when you do not need to heat the house, you will still turn on your boiler once in a while to heat that system. So it becomes a little bit of a, a hassle. So, yeah, but this again, this is a very inexpensive design. It's good to it's very uh, easy to install, but it does. Uh, it does work if you have a hot water system. It's called it's called also integrated design or immer immersed coil. Uh, the caption on this picture says a coil inside a storage tank heats the tank water with boil boiler heated water or refrigerant carrying heat rejected from a building or a refrigerator. That is true if you are working with a very huge heat pump. So you can use that with a with a heat pump as well. Uh, but again, it's going to be more more elaborate than this one. Okay, moving on. Some alternatives. I'm giving you some options here. And I find it very interesting. These are some solar water heaters. So this one is uh, completely passive, meaning does not need any pump. The hot water will go through the solar collector over here. And hot water, you know, it rises. Cold water will sink, and of course, it's going to take hours and hours to heat that water tank, but it does work and it keeps circling water from this tank over here. So, this is a passive one, does not require a pump. But the location of this collector is kind of uh, iffy, it has to be in the bottom. I don't know if you have if you have uh, shade or you have enough sun rays coming here or not. Uh, the other one is can be put in the top, but if you do that, you will have to pump water, and then you will lose some energy pumping water. Pumping water requires a lot of energy, and it, because water is heavy. So, I don't know if this is going to be very practical. But, uh, hey, depending on how much heat you get, you might be getting your money worth. Moving on, tankless water heaters. They also called on-demand water heaters, 
and they can go up to five gallons per minute at 140, which 140 is very, very good temperature to have. So again, they heat the water in demand. Talking about water efficiency, uh, it's to reduce the hot water consumption. That's one, one way to do the efficiency, have more efficient uh, spending of that hot water. Also reduce the size of the storage tank, or you can also reduce the losses through piping. These are three ways you can do to have better water, hot water efficiency. Again, shower heads, they, again, there's so many of those shower heads that give you enough pressure without having to sacrifice, uh, I mean, you don't sacrifice pressure and you get the right, right flow, but you don't lose a lot of water. So, the small streams are better than very dispersed stream as, as uh, sprays. You want like a really good stream of water giving you the right pressure so you don't use a lot of hot water system, uh, hot water when you shower. Uh, heat traps are very important because a lot of time when we do, when we do uh, the piping for the hot water system, we have to vent, right? Because if you're going to take some, if you have to take some water out, you have to put some water in. So there's always going to be some kind of vent for the system for air to come in and out. Having those heat traps does does eliminate the need for, uh, I mean, this is uh, reduce the uh, heat losses. It says heat traps with gravity operated check valves prevent most convection heat loss due to circulation of hot water in the pipe above the water heater. Okay, insulation again is a very, very big deal. Uh, I encourage you to go and look at your look at your system and look at the pipes that are uninsulated and think about that. How much heat are you losing and do you want to lose heat at that space or not? Sometimes it's intentional. You want to lose some heat in that place to keep it a little bit warm in the winter. But if the heat is too much, maybe you should insulate this pipe to get the heat where you want it to be. Uh, recalibrating time temperature is very important. I have to say that uh, at some point you don't want to go below 120. Even though you might not need that the water to be that hot, if you go below 120, you will grow some kind of harmful bacteria inside that tank. There are some specific, specific bacteria that grows in, in warm water. So you want to go low, but not too low. Uh, they say here, even when the control list, the water temperature, this isn't reliable indicator of the actual temperature. Water temperature should be measured at the nearest tab, several hours of adjusting thermostat, then adjust thermostat as necessary. Uh, so, when they say the temperature here, that's usually not that accurate. That's why in a lot of gas water heaters, you just say, they just tell you high, low, and medium. You don't get the number because the number is not very that accurate because I did tell you that water does mix in and depending on how fast you mix that in, you you probably you probably not getting the right temperature that it indicates. And uh, okay, now we are moving to tank maintenance again. Tank has to be flushed once a year, even more than that. A lot of residue in the water here, sediments, lime, rust get accumulated in the bottom. There's always a valve to flush that tank. It's a very good practice to flush your tank once in a while to get rid of those sediments. Again, the tank also does corrode. There's something called here the anode rod location. That is the sacrificial metal that will rust before your tank. Once this sacrificial metal is gone, you probably is going is going you probably are going to uh, erode your tank and you'll have more rust and eventually once this is gone, the tank wall is gone, you will start to have leaks. Corrosion, you have to replace the anode every from two to three years, depending on how much, how often you use that that uh, rod. And uh, they come in 30 to 40 inch and they are replacing the top of the tank. Uh, one of the biggest problem is uh, some people, uh, the tank comes in with that anode, it's 40 inches. And uh, sometimes you put the tank in a very tight location and you're trying to put in that replacement rod and it doesn't fit in because it's too long. So I don't know if I have a picture here, but uh, think about that. The tank is here, the rod is this long, you try, and the, this is the ceiling. So it's already in it, so how are you going to put that big rod in there? So they do have some rods that come as uh, sausage links with small little change in them and you can just drop those rods in there. 
so just because it's in a tight place, do not let that discourage you from replacing that anode. Otherwise, probably you're going to go through the tank within five years, it will be completely corroded. Here is some pros and cons for all these systems. Uh, I encourage you to look at these because they are kind of uh, summarizing what are the options we have and which one will work for us. And again, there is no one size fits all. They always say it's always dependent on the situation. So guess I'm guess Lost that last slide. I'm gonna go back to it. So looking looking at this again, uh let's, let's see if it makes this a little smaller. So gas is very cheap, is an install, but again. You have low energy factor and requires separate chimney and venting. That's something you have to think about. So again, I put it first because a lot of people go for the gas and propane storage tank. So gas with storage is high, high recovery efficiency, which what do we mean by recovery efficiency? Meaning that when you take that, when you take out the hot water and you put in cold water, it's really fast for you. It's, it's relatively fast to get that, to get that, uh, water heated again. And they're expensive and require some service again. As I said, they require to be cleaned, flushed, and the sacrificial rod to be to be uh, replaced. Instantaneous gas, they have high efficiency, low annual cost, and they're easily installed, and they also can be sealed, but they're a little bit pricey. So, so far it seems like this seems to be like a winner to us. It's starting to get better and better, right? And electric storage water tanks, high efficiency, but they're expensive, and they have long recovery time. But you do not need to worry about gas, and depending on how much you use the hot water, this could be actually not a bad option. Heat pump, they're good, but good efficiency in a way. Uh, they use waste heat if you have waste heat, but if you don't have waste heat, where are you going to get the heat from, right? You're going to, you're going to have to have combustion, or you're going to cool the room, which is another issue here. This cool the room, and it can be a little bit expensive. Uh, indirect water heaters, cheap, efficient, but you will have to oversize the boiler to compensate for that. And probably when you do your project, you will see at the last sheet in the Excel uh, spreadsheet that I said, if you, you might want to consider increasing your boiler size just to accommodate for hot water needs. So you can do that as well, and it's good to have this kind of information under your belt. Uh, solar water heaters, they're very fuel free. They're inexpensive you install them once they don't go very high which is not bad at all as well but uh, again they can be expensive to install but they are getting cheaper they can be very much cheaper and uh, again you're gonna run into the problem with the storage you will need storage with hot water heaters okay I hope you can look at the book uh, check out those water heaters let me see which chapter is that uh, water here I'm looking at the book right now so that's, this is chapter nine, actually. And uh, yeah, there are pictures here and the alternatives for, I think I covered most of the stuff in the chapter over here. But uh, yeah, you'll find some information about that. And also I will look up some stuff on YouTube and post some videos as well. Okay, I hope you found this helpful, uh, helpful. And please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you very much.